Okay, here we have a beautiful portrait. And this is part of an auction find. I have a blue bathroom and stuff, so I wanted this only because it was unique. It has the water uh, for a bathroom and everything, and it had a nice uh, blue, grayish blue going around. So I thought, you know, it would work out good. Also, look at the old frame. But here's the portrait to begin with. Beautiful picture. It's all some abstract kind of painting. And this is who uh, created this beautiful picture. So I thought this was a nice one. Very pretty. I like the architect of the building there. And to be able to paint that, you know, like that, with all the little details and everything. Look at that. I don't even have the window, but to have the little tower stuff all showing so beautifully. Because in the tree in the town. Very nice. So it's like the flooding of the town. <laughs> the swans come through town. I mean, really, stop and think of it. I mean, it's like the water. There's all the buildings. I'm sure those who have been flooded out don't find it very amusing, but it's different to see it, you know, in a abstract painting like this. Cool. But look at the design of the frame. The frame itself is really a nice frame. Love it. And something else that led me to believe that it was really a super nice old one is how it's put together in the back. I mean, it does have its little pegs there, the metal pegs to hold it in. But the fact that it has paper and that it's hung this way, you know, that's the way you see a lot of the old ones hung back in the day. The old string like that, and then the little pitons in the bottom. What do you call them? Little buttons? I don't know. Go English. I'm French. See piton. <laughs> Alright. But to see that it was covered with the paper and everything. And how the... It's not really string. It's some kind of a wire for it to be hung like that. So that indicated age to me too. So I kind of like it. I definitely fell right in love with the uh, with the frame. It's just so pretty. And then the picture just took me. All right. I'm trying to get that light out of it. All right, so here we are again with the creator of this beautiful abstract painting. And there's a picture. So if you know anything more about this uh, picture, where the swans get to swim right in the middle of town. Look at that, ain't that something? By all means, leave it in a comment. Be interesting to try to find out the age of this beautiful abstract painting. I have a bit of a cold, in case you haven't noticed, but I can still make videos. All right. Bye-bye, my friends. Okay, here we have a watercolor abstract, and you can feel it you know, in touching it, you can really feel it. Look at that. Very, very different. And it said down here for Susan, back 
in 86. And then it's signed FL. And I'm afraid that's all we have to go by. If you happen to know anything more about this, FL was a famous painter or abstract person. By all means, leave it in a comment. That's all I have. It's definitely ha important because look at the way you know this stands up. Then it stands up almost like one frame on top of another frame. Look at that. It's like one frame on top of the other frame. Oh, wait a minute. This comes up like that, like that, like that. Oh, all right. And look at that. Just put on a cloth like that. All right. So this might help you a little bit more. I wonder if... I guess it doesn't come up, does it? Oh my god. Very, very delicate. Very delicate paper. Look at that. Very delicate. Just so you can see all of it very carefully. Those of you who love the abstract. All right. Yeah, and it's like putting one frame and the other frame. All right. So this is it. Ain't that something, huh? So someone done this very special for someone, and this really means a lot. So if you know the artist, who FL would be, By all means, leave it in a comment. All right. Be sure to share this now with other artists, you know, or in the artist community, if you know of the big groups and everything. Uh, so maybe we, I can find an answer to this. It's my curiosity and I need to know. All right. Bye-bye now. All right, look at this. This one's part of an auction find. Very, very different. Okay, apparently there were a whole bunch of parts to it. There was 25 in all. They put in 17. Part 17, oh well, part 17 will be published January 15th. Okay. But there was 100 famous paintings. Reproduced in color with descriptive notes. Contents of this part. The one that's missing is the flower. The Mona Lisa. The Leonardo da Vinci. Mother Darling by Joseph Clark. And the Canal with a Fisherman by Alphonse La, La, La Rose. Those three are in here. Flowers was not in there. But look at the price. Price, 7D net. Not quite sure what that means, but boy, look at the, look at the beauty of the design here. Alright, so just by the way the hat is and everything, that gives you a good indication of the age. Okay, and look at this one here, on this side. And then look. This is so nice. And the same on this side here. Okay. Gasell and Company Limited. London, New York, Toronto, and Mel Melbourne. Okay. Oh, if you notice on the outside here, put together with a string. Just wanted to make sure I pointed that one out. 
That's probably how it was easy for one to be lost. Individual, individuality makes the man. Okay, so this tells you about all the points. Okay, and then the Mona Lisa. I'll give it to you in phases, so you can just pause the video if you choose to read it, as everyone reads at a different level. And my cold was pretty bad, so I'll give it to you in pieces. Girl's masterpiece. Okay. And here we have the portrait. Look at that. You can have a nice close view. of the Mona Lisa. Okay, and then this one here, Mother's Darling by Joseph Clark. Alright, let's take a good look at this one. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Beautiful bedspread, too. Look at that. Beautiful, loving picture. That's all of it like this. Of course, this paper is really seen better. But the pictures on there nice. There's no spots or anything on the pictures. So that makes it lovely. Beautiful one. Okay. And then we have the canal with the fishman.
Perfect. Now let's show you the beautiful picture. And this one happens to go this way. <coughs> Look how closely you can see the paper it was on. Here's our fisherman. This is just so you can get real close and see the details of it. Beautiful, isn't it? Nice picture by the lake. A stream. It looks more like a stream. Beautiful. Very nice, I like that. Close picture of what the canvas paper looks like. Very nice portrait. Uh -huh. And this is some more of the advertising of it all. Oh, socks for men, really? Did they really have that? Oh my god, I can't believe that. That's so funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so that tells you how old this is. <laughs> I've never in my life ever seen one, have you? If you have, by all means, leave it in the comment. I have never seen that for men. Oh, that's funny. Very distinguished man to begin with. <laughs> oh, that's cute. I like that one. <laughs> All right. Oh, inspiration and perfume. Okay. All right, so we have no dates. Hope you've enjoyed my bringing this to you. Be sure to sub me, join me as a friend, and we'll bring you some more whatever we find at the auction. Be sure to share these with others now. All right, bye-bye. All right, here we have Suzanne 10 Watercolors. Isn't that something? I really like this great big uh, book. Kind of look. <laughs> look at that. Look how big this is. Alright. And look at that. And all it says is from Ford Collection. So I don't know too much of anything more about it. Unless maybe Ford had it in uh, part of the display in their rooms. You know the uh, display room. Because it says from Ford Collection. So maybe it was. So let's turn this great big book here over this way. There we go. And look at that. It has to all open up this way. Look how well protected they are. This is quite a collection here. All right, look at this one. Ah. And it's like trees. There's a tree. There's the water. And you can see houses along the water line. Look at that. Isn't that something how, you know, you can really see a lot just by the watercolors. Got all the pencil marks. That helps you, you know, for the design of the tree. And all the colors for the leaves. Water just left that white. And then the houses, all different colors. They're not signed. But it seemed like it may have been displayed in the display room at the Ford dealership. Wouldn't that be something, huh? Don't know. All right, now look at this one. Okay, kind of looks like it's a bridge. And a whole bunch of people. Looks like they're in the water. Making this the water. 
not fully dressed, as you can see. Definitely leaves a lot for you to look at and for the imagination. Very nice, though. The pots that need to be defined are defined. Makes watercolor really nice. Ain't that something? And look at the paper that it's on. I'll go right up close so you can see. Just paint it right on there. Alright. And here we have a house. Golden Day House. It must be going up to the barn or something. Very different. Nice. Looks like this one got some of the sunlight. It's been in the frame. You could tell it's been in the frame. It aged. Yep. This one's been in a frame. They haven't all been in a frame. Mr. Nudie here. He didn't get himself a frame. Hmm. Some did, some didn't, huh? Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> some were worth displaying and some weren't. Okay. Well, we can understand why. But this one, oh, this one's a little one. All right, so what does this one tell us? Hmm. Must be a church or a different view of the house. You got your fence in the front. Hmm, almost look like a birdhouse. <laughs> but then it wouldn't be that long. Neat. I like how they've done the trees and everything. And the center has a building in it. Great. Definitely a smaller one. Okay. Oh, look at this one. Alright, this one might have been displayed. I don't know. It looks like it had been from the markings here or Maybe when it was put on the easel in order to paint a picture. All right, so there, now that looks like a church. Looks like a steeple there. Look at that, and that looks like it's a bridge. It goes over, and the water coming down. Hmm, almost gives you like a winter scenery. Doesn't it? Very nice. Mm, different. Double checking to make sure there's only one. All right. Well, we didn't get ten pictures, so some of the pictures are missing. I'm thinking this goes this way. Yeah. This looks like it goes this way. Because these look like houses. You almost, you have to step back. When you step back, you can see. Because if you're close, you, it just looks like a lot of just painting crazy all over the place. And everything. So when you're looking at abstract, just take the step back. See? And now it looks like there's water here. Looks like there's buildings. A little bit of reflection in the water. See how it looks different? You have to step back to look at it. There you go, the tree. But if you were to look at it like this, you know, it'd be really different. So just step back when you go to an art museum and look at some of them. Especially when you're looking at abstract. Just take that step back, then you see it differently. All right. There's no signature on none of them. All right. I 
hope you've enjoyed my bringing these all to you. Be sure to sub me. Join me as a friend. And we'll bring you some more of whatever we find. All right, and it's beautiful. Yeah, from Ford Collection. That's all it says. That's in the back. Nothing's in the back. And that's it. All right. Hope you've enjoyed my bringing them to you. Bye-bye now. Okay, here we have a few more of these beautiful painted pictures. They were all part of that collection. They just don't happen to have their own special little folders. They're Instructor's Picture Study Series, selected and arranged by Mary E. Owens. So these are a few more of the pictures. And this one is Age of Innocent by Reynolds. As you can see, it was just painted and then put it on this cardboard. And they're all a part of that collection and stuff. All on the same cardboard. I'm using all the soft colors to paint the picture. Look at that. Look how beautiful her dress is. They left her foot with no shoes. Just sitting out there underneath the tree. Isn't that something, huh? Now these are all portraits like from the 1920s and 19 early 30s. That seems to be what all the others are. So I'm assuming these are probably the same time period. And this one here says Baby Stewart by Van Dyke. All right. So I don't have the whole story to give you of them. Look at the way they're dressed. Isn't that something? I'm just throwing the brush of the colors all right in there. And of course, it's just painting on a paper here. In case you haven't, you've been hearing all the noises on these videos because we're having an ice storm, as you can see, hitting the glass as I'm doing the videos. But look at the seriousness of the face here. Look how beautiful the lips are. So this is all about teaching the art. Art of painting. Look at that, the beautiful colors they had to work with. Hope you've enjoyed my bringing them both to you. Be sure to sub me, join me as a friend. And by all means, share these with other artists or collectors of artwork or people who are just homebound and want to look at some beautiful artwork from almost 100 years old. It's all part of our history. So these are really beautiful historical pictures. All right. Bye-bye now. All right, here we have some more paintings. And these are all from the same batch, only they're not marked on and did not have their fancy little envelopes. I mean, cards or folders like the rest of them. But they're all instructor pictures, uh, study series and stuff. And, but, and they're all from the selected and arranged by Mary Owens. Only these here don't really have too much of anything as far as they have the beautiful painting. But they don't have who painted it. They were not in the folders. But as you can see, they're just painted pictures and put on just like some of the other ones that I just brought to you. So if you followed them, you can follow this one. Look at that. See how they did the shade? Of the hat on his face even. Isn't that beautiful? The only thing that's a little odd is to have his hair light right there. I find that a little odd. It would have to be like there was a hole in the hat in order for the light to show through like that. 
Well, that's a beautiful. I mean, look at the clothing. So all the other ones are somewhere around the 1930s. So you'll find this one to be probably in that same area too. Because everything's 1920, 1930s as far as the other pictures. It's on the same cardboard and everything as the other ones. So I believe they're all, and they all came in the same pack at the auction. So look at that. See how they have his clothing just hanging so beautifully on him? Neat. And look at these, the two girls and their sisters. Look at that. Look at the way they're dressed. How they lean forward to come to the center of the picture. Look at that. So if you happen to know anything about this one here, I believe that would still be from the Mary Owens collection. So beautiful, isn't it? The details and it all. And it's just a painting and they put it on this cardboard, just like the other ones. Painted it and then put it on. Such beautiful artists, huh? And then here you have the little girl. Look at the expression on her face. Almost like she's seen something that she's just hypnotized in. Look at the clothing. That gives you an idea. Beautiful picture. She's carrying something inside there, the way it's wrapped. or And this looks like a basket with some... Almost looks like cherries in there. Look at that. Not sure. But if you recognize some of these pictures, I mean, they're beautiful paintings. They're all paintings that people made in the school. Back in the 1920s and early 30s. These are almost 100 years old. Unreal for someone to still have it in their collection. All right, we're all part of this here. All right, stay tuned for more. We still have some that do have signed on it. Okay, so these are the ones that are not signed that were with the other ones. So I believe because they're on the same cardboard, I believe they are all from the same series. Uh, by Mary Owens. Alright. Bye bye now. Be sure to share these portraits. Let's get some answers on some of these, alright? Alright, bye bye. Okay, here we have another great painting. And this one's from 1923. And structure, picture, study series selected and arranged by Mary Owens. Subject number 33. Whoops. And this happens to be the money counter. Painted by Bartolom Easton Ben Murillo. Okay. And studied by John Lemons. All right. That's when they put it on a big cardboard. As you can see, it's just a painting. It's on just a paper laid on the cardboard and stuff. But there's a whole bunch of information all about it right here that I'll read to you, along with the questions that you might ask when you're looking at the portrait. Okay. And of course, in the back, there's always some extra information. So let's start with this part first. I'm going to kind of slide it a little bit this way here, just to get the glare out of the picture. 
Got to work at setting up a good lighting here, which I don't have. All right. So here's the detail of it all. Okay, the money counter. Here is a picture of a little Spanish girl and her brother. The girl is counting the money which they have earned from the sale of fruit. Apparently, the boy has just come from home with a replenished basket to take to the marketplace. In his desire to watch his sister, he crouches beside her, leaning for support on the basket from which some fruit has fallen to the ground. One may judge that the little girl bears at least a part of the family responsibility since she is seriously counting the coins. The boy, though interested, seems to be more carefree. It is evident that they are the children of thrifty parents. The girl has turned back her skirt and rolled up her sleeve to protect them from soil and wear. We notice, too, that for greater security, her purse hangs from her girdle between her dress and petticoat. The artist has centered our interest in the money in the girl's hand by directing the glaze of the girl and boy towards the coin by placing the hand which is holding the money against the dark background of the boy's clothing. See how subdued all the tones of the pictures are. Even the basket of fruit is in a soft green and browns. Marillo, a Spanish artist who painted this picture, was famous for his soft, rich colors. Ooh, he was a Spanish artist. Okay, now these are the questions you may ask when you're looking at the portrait. What are these children doing? How do you think they earn their living? What do you think usually usually carries the basket. Oh, who do you think usually carries the basket? Why does the girl count the money? Which one seems the older? Are the children interested in what they are doing? What do their facial expressions tell you? In what kind of climate do these children live? What reason can you give for thinking so. What is the center of interest in the picture? Geez, I just read it all to you. Hmm. How has the artist drawn your attention to it? Who painted the money counter? Do you think that the artist liked children? And why? Well, I do believe he did. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this beautiful picture. It's nice. Just put on old cardboard. All it is is a portrait. Okay, and because this is learning to paint, here you have right there. You can put it on full screen, pause the video, and read it all. These are helpful materials for the teacher. To help the teacher in teaching them how to paint this beautiful portrait. And of course, this is 1923. Alright. Hope you've enjoyed my bringing this to you. Bye bye now. Share with others. Don't forget to share. Other painters, other paint collectors, you know, people who collect nice, beautiful portraits from our history, because this is 1923. Share it with them. And everybody who's homebound and everything, they'd like to see beautiful old pictures like this and to hear the story behind the picture. 
All right? Sharing's always good. Bye-bye. All right, here we are today with another Instructor's Picture Study Series selected and arranged by Mary Owens. Subject number 74, The Belated Kid, painted by William Morris Hunt and studied by Gertrude Hurdle. All right. And this is 1930. Just think of that. 1930. Okay. And as you can see right here, there's a whole bunch of information about it and then questions that you may ask. <clears throat> and then here's the portrait for you to look at. And it's all on a cardboard. And here's the portrait. As you can see, it's on paper and put on there. All right. There you go. <clears throat> the Belated Kid. This picture by an American artist, William Morris Hunt, hung in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. We see a girl carrying a kid, while the mother goat follows her close behind. Darkness is gathering. Although the sky is filled with sunset colors, no doubt the rest of the flock reach home long ago. But this little kid could not keep pace with them and lagged farther and farther behind. The girl missed the kid and its mother and started out to look for them. Now they are returning home. The mother goat knows her kids affectionately and the girl shows a tender care for them both. The picture shows how an artist can express mood by means of lines. Horizontal lines brings a sense of peace and repose. Here they are stressed by sil silhouetting them strongly against the sunset sky. A stretch of distance brings serenity and so the landscape is left empty. Except for a gentle swell of the ground at the left and a tiny bit of interests far off to the right. The poetry and study resemble of the pictures shows the influence of Milton who has Hunt's fur friend as a teacher. The lightning is difficult to explain for the girl's left cheek is in sunlight although everything else indicates that the light is coming from the left of the picture. The spacious, darkening landscape seems to interpret the mood of the little pasture drama. And these are questions. What do you think has happened to the little kid in the girl's arms? How has the artist shown the affection of the mother goat. Is the girl fond of the kid and the mother goat? What makes you think so? How is the weight of the kid suggested? What time of day is it? How do you know? Describe the color scheme of the picture. Is it dark or bright? How many objects can you see in the picture? Does the picture make you feel excited or calm? What would the mountains on the skyline at the right have done to the simple lines of the picture? Would you have liked the picture as well? 
really nice. All right, and as you can see, it's a painted picture, kind of just like the other ones, the belated kid. Okay, and in the back here, because this is a teaching thing, there are some helpful hints. You can always just pause the video, make sure it's on full screen, and read that part all for yourself. All right. I hope you've enjoyed my bringing this to you. Be sure to share this with other artists because these are really good, good instructional. And this is from the 1930. Isn't that nice? 1930, they were teaching painting classes like this. All right. Bye-bye now. Okay, today we're bringing you some very rare auction finds because believe me, you don't find this at the auction. Been there, going there long enough to know that. And these are instructors' picture study series selected and arranged by Mary Owens. This is subject number 19, The Cook, painted by Jeans Simmons. Chadden and studied by John Lemons by the Owen Publish Company. Now this is actually 1923. This is really cool to find them in the folders like this. And look at that beautiful picture. Okay. Now just to show you, on this side here they tell you all about it. And then you have the portrait. And you got some more. Okay. So this is picture number 19. As you can see, it's a portrait. It's just sitting in there. <clears throat> and let me read this to you while you look at the beautiful portrait. Let's see if I can get the glare off there. To figure out which one it is that's doing that. Yeah, that's that one. Got a range of lights all the time. Alright, well, that's the best I can get that. Move it like this, maybe. There you go. The cook. This is a picture of a very familiar scene. It shows a cook at work in her kitchen. The clothes and the type of chair on which she is sitting tells us that this picture was painted many years ago. Her cap and apron look very much like the clothes worn in colonial times. Notice the meat block and the meat axe on the right hand side of the picture. They were common in the days when most people raised their own poultry. To a person who lived in that earlier period, a delivery wagon unloaded prepared cans and fruits, meats and vegetables would have been a most unusual sight. Household convenience such as running water, gas, electricity, and many labor-saving devices of today would have seemed like miracles to the people of that period. The woman in this picture makes us think of the home-like, simple people that the artist Millet liked to paint. She seems to be daydreaming. Perhaps she is thinking of some pleasant holiday or poss possibly she is making plans for her next array of attempting things to eat. This whole picture has a restful, quiet appearance that is free from the queer or efforts found in many modern paintings. The cook is an excellent example of Chardin's ability to paint his character so absorbed 
in their occupation or thought that they seem like real persons. It also illustrates his remarkable skill in combining colors so as to give a warm, rich effect. Now they have a part here that says questions. So these may be the questions you ask yourself when you look at the picture. <clears throat> what is the first what do you first see in this picture? Do you think that she lives many years ago? What makes you think so? Can you see what she is sitting on? Does it look like modern chair? What else do you see in this picture? Why is the tree stump there? Do you think that the cook makes much use of it? What do you think is in the bowl by the cook's feet? Can you see any other things to eat? If the cook's cap and apron were black, would you like the picture just as well? What is there about this picture that makes it seem real to you? Why do you think that Chardon liked to paint people of the middle class? Do you think that he is a good artist? I would definitely say yes, wouldn't you? All right, isn't that a beautiful picture? The cook. All on cardboard. And see, that's the small picture of this picture. So see? Okay, and then up here they have helpful materials for the teacher. So this was like a teaching guide to help them cook, I mean paint. Look at that. So beautiful. All right. And on the back, of course, they had some more instruction stuff. So what do you think of this? Pretty cool to have, huh? We have more. There was a whole pile of them. So I was really happy to get that. So stay tuned for more beautiful paintings. Bye-bye.